What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Darku and today we're going to be doing a full informative guide on everything you need to know about breeding in PokeMMO. We're going to be starting at beginner tips, like for example what is breeding, and then we're going to go to the most advanced tips, which is, you know, the 6 times 31 IVs plus nature, etc. If you don't know what any of these are, do not worry, this entire guide will show you everything you need to know. Before we start, I just want to say everything in the video will be timestamped and put into chapters, whether you want to read it in the description and jump to a certain location, or if you just click the video and jump to a certain location, that's up to you. Everything will be labelled for specific tips that you're looking for. The first question is then, what is breeding? Well, when a daddy Pokemon and a mummy Pokemon really like each other... <laughs> okay, we won't do a deep dive like that. The real and most basic answer is, if you have a male and a female of the same egg group, you can breed them into a new egg, which will make a little baby, and it'll have the parent's attributes. There is obviously genderless Pokemon in the game, and also dittos are involved as well along the line, but obviously as we go through the questions, we'll do more of a deeper dive in how everything works. So how does PokeMMO do breeding differently than the original Pokemon games? Well, for example, in the original games, you would go into a breeding area like this, and you would go into the breeding house, per se, and you would speak to the old lady, you would give her two mons, let's take these two for example, this male Smurgle and this female Smurgle, again, for example, you would give these two mons to the lady inside, and these two mons would constantly sprout eggs, and you would speak to the old man, he would give you an egg, and you know, like ten minutes later, you speak to the old man, he'd give you, he'd give you another egg, etc. So that's how it works in the original games. You could use stuff like Destiny Knot, etc. to carry IVs over. Again, we're not going to deep dive into that just yet, this is the most basic tutorial part. But in PokeMMO, it works completely differently. Because obviously it's an MMO, so it has to do stuff differently, and this is one of the best mechanics in the game, in my opinion. So to start off with, you don't even go inside to speak to the lady about breeding, you literally go to the old man outside, and if I was to give him this male Smurgle and this female Smurgle, for example, what would happen is he would give you an egg. And this egg, you know, for example, this is another Smurgle, pretend that this is like a baby Smurgle, okay, or an egg, I suppose, right? So I would give him this male Smurgle and this female Smurgle, and he would breed them together and it would consume them so they would be no more. They would they would not exist anymore. And all you would be left with was the egg, which shared the attributes of both the mum and the dad Pokemon, essentially. I hope that sums it up the best I can for that basic part. What do you need for breeding? So again, the basic premise would be you would need a male and female of the same egg group. However, there is different things in play here. For example, you would have genderless mons in the game, and you also have dittos. What are IVs? So IVs actually stand for individual values, in which case every Pokemon sort of has a random chance of getting IVs uh, when you catch them. Uh, you can obviously breed IVs over, etc. But we're going to quickly show you an example of what IVs are if you've never heard of them or if you need a refresher. So, for example, we have our Shinx here, our shiny Shinx, and it has an IV, well, there's an IV page here, and the IV is 31 on speed and 0 on attack. So 0 can be very bad, it depends on the stat, we'll deep dive into this later, but 0 is not what you want on all your stats. 31 is obviously the best you can get, 0 being the worst. If we compare that Shinx to this Luxray, say for example I level up the Shinx to level 100, and there's no extra things involved. If I use this Luxray with speed of 1 IV against a Luxray with a speed of 31 IV, obviously the 31 is going to be much, much faster, and that's how the IVs work. They're like DNA of a Pokemon. Now if you're wondering, wow, 31 sounds pretty good as an IV, can I get 31 on everything? Yes, you can. Later on we will be doing a deeper dive on how breeding works with shinies, non-shinies, how the IVs crow across, and how natures go across. What happens when you breed a Pokemon in PokeMMO? So, I'll show you as a prime example, we'll go to this old man over here, which is at the breeding area, and we'll speak to him, I'm the daycare man, blah blah blah, wants to breed your Pokemon, and he'll tell you about giving you an egg, etc, and he'll take two mons from you. So, again, we've got those Smurgles, for example, if I pop one Smurgle in there, and the female Smurgle in there, you'll notice that they're both in there, and in the middle you'll see a new Smurgle, and it'll have the attacks that it would have, the OT that it would have, which is the original trainer, which we'll, we'll talk about later. Um, but here you have the health, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. These are all the IVs it could come out as because of the parents. 
So what it'll do here is it'll take, again, this male Smurgle has a HP IV of 4, and this female Smurgle has an IV of 21, so the baby will come out between 4 and 21 IVs, if that makes any sense. And that'll happen for every IV on the board. Now again, there is items and stuff to change this, 31s are a big factor in this, etc. Obviously we're going to talk about that a tiny bit later, but I'm just going to show you what happens. So once you've done this, you can click Breed, and it'll uh, say that you won't get these Pokemon back, aka the mum Pokemon and the dad Pokemon here, will, will be completely consumed and deleted, and you'll only have the egg left of this Mon. We'll click Yes. And it'll say, do you want to choose this gender? If you say yes, sometimes it depends on like the actual egg group. Say, for example, an Eevee. If you wanted to have a uh, female Eevee, it would cost you so much more money than if you wanted a male one. You obviously don't need to pick the gender. You can just say no and it'll come out random. But the chances are it will come out male because of the high male to female ratio on an Eevee. Obviously, Smurgles are 50-50. So if I clicked on male, it would only cost me 5,000. And we'll click yes, and then it'll ask you if you want to uh, put it in a certain Pokeball, and then again it would consume the parents and you would only have the egg. You can obviously click no and it will just terminate the transaction, you won't lose your parents. So what are egg groups? So you've heard Darku talk about egg groups quite a few times now already, but now's the deep dive into it of how it all works and how you can use egg groups for your advantage whilst breeding. So for example, if we take our Smurgle again, we're going to take the male and the female Smurgle and we're going to just basically go over how it all works. So obviously we have our male Smurgle and our female Smurgle. Again, you don't need Smurgles. This is an example Pokemon, okay? So a small bit of information I forgot to add in earlier about how Pokemon Mo does breeding differently is that when you're breeding, the egg will always be what the female Pokemon is. So for example, if we were to breed this female Smurgle, it would always come out no matter what as a Smurgle. However, if we went to breed a male Smurgle with, like, let's say for example, a female of a different egg group, it would always come out as whatever the female is, it would never be the Smurgle. The only way you can get a Smurgle egg from a male Smurgle is if you either breed with another female Smurgle or a Ditto. Whereas if you wanted a Smurgle egg from a female Smurgle, you could breed this with any male field egg group or a Ditto. You're like, okay, Doc, I kind of understand this, but please explain a little bit more. So, for example, if we're breeding up this Smurgle here, this male Smurgle, or a female Smurgle, it doesn't matter, any Smurgle, as an example, we're going to click on the first page, and on the Pokédex, you can click on it. And once you click on it, you'll see here, and at the bottom, it'll say Field Egg Group. Now, this is very important. Again, not every Pokémon is Field Egg Group. This is a Smurgle example, so whatever your Pokémon is that you want to breed, you should check what your Egg Group is. But for this example, Smurgle is of the field egg group. This is really important in Pokemon MMO for breeding because if you're trying to go for a 5 or 6 IV Mon with nature, or if you're trying to breed a shiny Pokemon, it is so important to keep it as a female every time you breed it. So here's more of a deep dive in how the breeding works than with the male and female, okay, with the egg groups as well being a prime factor. So, if we went to the GTL, which is at the bottom right here, or if you're on the phone, it's probably top right, it'll be the green icon, it's the Global Trade Link GTL. This is where players buy and sell Pokemon, items, etc, clothings, everything you can think of, okay? So if we go to the Pokemon listing, and we type in Smurgle, and we go for like the lowest price Smurgle, you'll notice that the lowest price Smurgle is, well, let's just say around 2k, alright? 2k around average, they sell if they're like a rubbish Smurgle, just 2k. Nothing too special about that, but it is still 2k. If we went to breed IVs on a Smurgle, it would be way higher, etc. But we're going to just use the default Smurgle, for example. So again, if you have a female Smurgle, you have the opportunity to breed with anything in the field egg group that's male. You don't have to have a Smurgle. However, if you've got a male Smurgle, you have to breed with a Ditto or a female Smurgle to keep that line going. You cannot breed with other field groups because you will make whatever the female is. And again, if it's not a Smurgle, it's not going to be a Smurgle. So although we said 2k is the lowest price, obviously you can notice that all of these are male. If we go to the advanced search once again, and we go to gender, we go, uh, we want a female Smurgle and we search. The lowest price for female, I mean, our average again is like around 2.5k, so it's even more. So again, it's more money if you have a male Smurgle and you're trying to breed into a Smurgle line. It's either you go for a 2,500 plus like Smurgle female, or you go for a Ditto, which I will tell you now will sell for a minimum of around 4k each on the GTL. Just in case you don't believe me, I am going to quickly search it up for you. 
So there you go, dittos are 4,200 at the moment, they've actually inflated a little bit. So having a male Smurgle is not a good idea, however having a female of the egg group is perfect for breeding because, again, you can go with any field group that is a male. So for example, instead of typing in a name, you don't need to have a Smurgle to breed with a Smurgle to keep a Smurgle, and that sounds really confusing, but if we go to advanced search right here, and we go to egg group, and we change this to the field egg group, and we change the gender to male, and then we search, you'll notice that the lowest price is literally like a thousand. Like, it's literally a thousand. That's like the lowest price you can possibly get, okay? So you could breed, for example, this female Smurgle with a Quagsire, a Bib Barrel, a Giraffe Egg, a, an Apom, a Mindfu. So you can use anything of that egg group, male-wise, to breed with your female Smurgle, and it will always come out a Smurgle because it's female. You don't need to pay extortionate prices for a ditto or a specific gender of your own Pokemon. You can use the entire egg group and it's so much cheaper. On to the next question then, which is dittos and how they work. So, for this example, I am actually going to be using my chandelier. Uh, for this uh, chandelier right here is a female chandelier with 31 speed, 31 special attack. And we're going to be going over how the genders work with the dittos because it's very, very important. I've sort of explained it, but this will be a way better explanation. So of course, we're gonna to go to the chandelier and check the egg group, and the egg group is Chaos. So if we go to the GTL, and we're looking for Pokemon, and we go to Advanced Search, we want the egg group of... So we want Chaos, we want a male Chaos with 31 special attack, and let's say we want like a HP IV, so we're gonna go 31 HP as well. Male, Chaos, 31, 31, Search. Now, the minimum price for this is 44k at the moment on this list, like of this video. So this Litwick here is a Chaos Egg group and it is a male and it has 31 HP and 31 special attack. I could breed this alongside my chandelier uh, with certain items and we, we could make a 3 times IV Mon. Again, we'll deep dive into how all that works later. But for example, like I said, if we want to breed that, it would only cost us 44k because it's a female chandelier. If it was a male chandelier, we'd have to find a female chandelier with these stats, or a ditto. So then let's take for example, if this chandelier was a male, again, it could only breed with either a ditto, or a female chandelier of the same attributes. So let's do that. Let's type in, uh, we'll, well, we'll do Litwick first. Litwick, Litwick advanced search, we're going to change this to a female Litwick, and we're going to take the egg group off, because we don't need that. So luckily for us, Litwicks actually aren't that expensive in comparison. Like, they're not that bad. So if this was a male chandelier, it wouldn't even be that bad for a Litwick, in all honesty. But So it's either the Litwick you go for, or a Ditto. So let's check the Ditto price. The Ditto prices for this aren't even that bad either. However, let's take for example, if this was a male chandelier, and we wanted to keep it chandelier, and it had, let's say for example again, 4 times 31 IVs, and you wanted to keep it as a chandelier, you would then have to try and find another 4 or 5 times 31 IVs, female chandelier, Litwick, etc, like the Evo line, or a ditto. In which case, you know, trying to find that kind of thing is super, super expensive, so the further on the line you go, you want to keep this as female as much as possible, to keep it the cheapest as possible. If we try searching for a ditto, let's say 31 HP, 31 Special, 31 Special Defense, 31 Speed, and 31 Defense, and we try searching for that, I mean, you've got absolutely no hope for it to start off with, but let's say we wanted maybe like a 4 times one not a 5 times one they are ridiculous prices. So it is absolutely best to go for a female when breeding. Held Items. Now we're going to quickly go over how the held items work in breeding in Pokemon mode. So the best place to go is in one of the breeding houses, and there's always a lady at a table no matter what region you're in. And if you speak to her, you'll see that she can sell you some stuff. So for example, if you give this power weight, power bracer, belt, lens, band, anklet, to a Pokemon, uh, it will keep a certain stat. So for example, this Shinx, if I wanted to keep this 31 speed, I would have to give it the Power Anklet. They cost 10,000 each, and they get consumed every time as well. So for example, I would buy this Power Anklet, and I'll check my bag, and I'll put the Power Anklet on my Shinx. And then when breeding, again, this Shinx would disappear because it's the mum, and also the band would be gone and it would go into the egg, but it would guarantee that the speed stays in the egg. 
So when, let's say for example, I was putting my Luxray and my Shinx together here, male and female, and I was breeding these two, if I keep the power antler on, whilst breeding, we keep the 31 speed. So if we speak to the old man, this will show an even better example. If I put the Luxray and the Shinx in, you'll notice that because I've got this power antler on, it keeps the speed. So the speed is 31. There is no between numbers here. It is a guaranteed 31 because of the antler. And that is how you pass IVs over. Obviously, when we go back in the house, I will show you the other anklets. So now I'm going to show you the other braces and how they work. Obviously, like I said, the power weight is for HP. The bracer is for attack. The belt is defense. The lens is special attack. And the band is special defense. Depends on what IV you want to keep from the Mon that's what you give them so now onto the ability pill we have it costs 35,000 to actually buy one of these and I'll now explain how that works so for instance my Luxray here uh, as you can see if I go to the tab with the moves and etc you can see that the ability he has is rivalry which I actually do really like but if we go to the pokedex side we click on the pokedex you'll notice that the abilities are here so you can either have rivalry or intimidate and he also has a hidden ability, which is Guts. We'll go into hidden abilities and alphas after this, like a certain question later on. But for now, we're avoiding that because these ability pills do not give you hidden abilities. They only give you one or the other of the normal abilities. So if I was to buy this ability pill for 35k, I could then use the ability pill on my Luxray to change the rivalry, sorry, here, so to change this rivalry and it could give it Intimidate if I wanted to, or the other way around, if it had Intimidate, I could give it Rivalry by giving it the ability pill. Obviously every Pokemon varies, they don't have those abilities, not every Pokemon has those. But just go to the Pokemon you want, click on the Pokedex icon, and you'll notice that it has the abilities here that it could have. If it only has one ability, there is no reason to get an ability pill for it. If it has two or three, you do get to choose when you click on the ability pill and use it. You get to choose which ability you would like. Again, hidden abilities are to do with alphas and swarms around alphas, etc. So we'll go on to them later. The last tip then for items for breeding is the Everstone. For example, if I go to my bag and type in Everstone, you'll notice that Everstones work a little bit differently on this. Now, if you are holding it in battle and stuff and you get XP and you level up and you're holding an Everstone, it still works like the old Everstone, like you don't evolve if you're holding one. However, if you hold one during the breeding process, it will carry over the nature. For example, if I bring up my Luxray here, he has Relaxed, which is plus 10% defense and minus 10% speed, which is just not great, to be honest with you. If you want a fast Mon, you do not want Relaxed. Now, you don't want Gentle either, but for example, if I wanted to move this nature over onto this Mon, I would need to drag this Everstone or click on it, etc. And put Everstone on, and then when they breed, it is guaranteed to have this Gentle nature on the egg. So just like the bracers, that's how an Everstone works as well, to pass on the nature to the next kin. Breeding non-genders. Now we did mention this a little bit earlier today with the Porygon, etc. However, I want to just go into a bit of a deep dive of it so nobody gets anything wrong here. So for example, I have a Porygon and I have a Voltorb here. They are both genderless, however, they cannot breed together. So for example, this Porygon here has like one attack. Let's say, and this isn't what you would do, but for example, if I wanted 31 attack, I could get like a 31 attack IV and breed it over. But once again, just because it's genderless doesn't mean it can go with something else that's also genderless. That is not how it works. So this Voltorb cannot breed with this Porygon and this Porygon cannot breed with this Voltorb. If I wanted to breed this Porygon, I would have to breed it with the Porygon Evolution line or a Ditto. And again, this is where Dittos come in very expensive. This is where Porygons would be very expensive. And this is another prime example of how Dittos can work as well. So if I went to Ditto, and again, we'll just use the attack for example once again. So 31 attack Ditto, and we'll go for the lowest price, 6,200 on the GTL. However, if we typed in Porygon, is it Porygon? The Porygon with 31 attack is 20k minimum. So again, you would want to breed that with a Ditto, not a Porygon. However, later down the line, when you reach 4 times 31 IVs, 5 times 31 IVs, it will be so expensive for Porygons, it will be even worse for Dittos. When it comes to genderless Mons, they are so expensive to breed. However, because you can only have your own evolution line or Dittos, so it's very, very expensive. But that's how that works. Once again, you cannot breed with any genderless thing. It has to be of its evolution line. 
But there's exa another example, this Voltorb can only be with a Voltorb or its evolutionary line. So again, if you want to find out what that is on the Voltorb, you can just click on him and the Pokedex and go to Evolution Tree. And you'll notice that obviously he can evolve, he can he can breed with an Electrode. So you've got Voltorb or Electrode or Ditto and that is it. So you can just basically assume that Genderless is the same thing as having a male Mon. You can only breed with its only thing or a Ditto. It's very, very expensive. Speed up breeding? So yes, you can in fact speed up breeding. So breeding in this one specifically in PokeMMO works with time, not steps as well. That's also something that's slightly different from the original games. Some of the games had it as well. But if you notice, uh, at the very top left we have uh, Intimidate because our first Pokemon in our party actually has Intimidate as its ability. If you hover over it, it has an outer uh, battle sort of uh, ability as well. If I hover over it now, it repels some lower leveled enemies and that's how like outer battle abilities work. However, for example, we've got our chandelier out here. You'll notice that the ability that it has at the bottom is called Flame Body, which in battle, if contact is made with the Pokemon, it may burn the attacker. However, if I was after, if I was to have this up front in my party, so it's number one, you notice that Flame Body also has an outer battle sort of ability as well. The Flame Body will hatch eggs faster. I don't know precisely how much faster it is, but it is definitely faster. So you can literally just stand still and your eggs will eventually hatch. However, if you have Flame Body at the front of your party and it says Flame Body at the top left, it will hatch so much more faster. Reading alphas and hidden abilities. The best thing to do for this is to unlink yourself from the idea that uh, alphas and hidden abilities are linked together. Yes, they do carry together at some times, but if you think of alphas as different from hidden abilities, it is much easier to calculate how things work. For example, if I breed an alpha Milotic and a non-alpha, uh, what will happen is the egg will come out with non-alpha, but it will have the hidden ability carried over. If I was to breed this Alpha Milotic with a hidden ability with a normal Ditto, no hidden ability, it would come out as a normal Milotic, or sorry, normal Feebas, I should say, uh, with a hidden ability. However, if the roles were reversed, let's say for example, this Milotic did not have a hidden ability, but this Ditto did, if they were to breed, the Feebas that came out would not have the hidden ability. Now, if I was to breed the Alpha Milotic with an Alpha Ditto, with a, obviously a hidden ability as well, uh, this would actually come out as an Alpha Feebas with a hidden ability. Now if I was to breed this Milotic with another Alpha and hidden ability Milotic, it would also come out as a Feebas with a hidden ability and Alpha as well. If this was a female Alpha Milotic, I could actually breed this with any male of the egg group Milotic Alphas and it would come out as an Alpha Milotic as well. Now we've already mentioned how if you go with an alpha and a non-alpha you can breed it to have a non-alpha but hidden ability, that is one way of breeding it. One thing to note is that when you find alphas in the wild they'll pop up on the map etc. They sometimes have little swarms around them and they have a chance to have a hidden ability on them and not be alphas as well. Another thing to note as well, this isn't really breeding specific, but this is on about obviously the abilities etc. Let's take my Luxray again for example, it has Rivalry. You can actually get the hidden ability on this without having to breed it specifically. Uh, if you go on the GTL, this is the easiest way to find it. We'll go for the, uh, I think it's called the Prismatic. Yeah, Prismatic Pearl. You can use this and it will give you the hidden ability on a Mon that didn't originally have it. As long as they're actually able to have a hidden ability. So for example, Luxray, if you look at him, he does have a hidden ability here. However, some Mons in the game do not have hidden abilities yet as it is still new-ish feature. If you're wondering how to get one of these Prismatic Pearls, you can actually trade in a Shiny to a strange man who is in every region in different locations and he will give you a Prismatic Pearl. However, I would not recommend that. I would keep the Shiny, I would not trade in the Pearl. If you're also wondering how else to get it, I'm pretty sure if you go to the matchmaking sign up, sometimes you can get rewards like these and sometimes they are also the Pearl. So just to recap, an alpha with a non-alpha of the same type will not come out as an alpha but will carry the hidden ability. An alpha with an alpha will carry alpha plus hidden ability and an alpha with a ditto will not do that. And an alpha mon who has the hidden ability plus alpha with a normal ditto will only carry over the hidden ability as well. If the ditto had a hidden ability with no alpha, it would not carry the hidden ability. Dittos do not carry them. Egg moves and how to breed them. So for this example, I've chosen a really difficult one to pretty much show off how it all works, okay? 
So in this instance, we're using a Squirtle, who, if we look at the Pokedex right now, you can note that Squirtle is in the egg group of Monster and Water A. Now that is important, because the move we want to try and teach it, if you go here, you can see the starting moves, the levels, the TMs, the HMs, etc. If we go to the very bottom, you'll notice that Squirtle can learn loads of egg moves. Obviously, whatever Mon you're looking at can usually learn some kind of egg move. So Squirtle can learn egg moves. And it has a Water Spout Egg move. Now, Water Spout is a extremely strong move. And this power is 150 with 100 accuracy and only 5 PP. But it's such a strong move that literally, like, legendaries like Kyogre have it. And from what I know, like, normal ones, I think, like, Whalmer and Whale Lord have Water Spout. And that's literally it. The only way you can get this is by breeding it over. You're thinking, okay, well, if it's only, like, Whalmer or Whale Lord, why can't you just breed that over? That should be simple, right? So... I'll take Whalmer for another example. Now, please don't forget, Squirtle is a monster and water A egg group. So if we wanted to breed with a Whalmer, we'd hopefully have that as the same egg group, correct? Well, you'd be wrong, because Whalmer is field and water B egg group. So you're thinking, okay, well, Whalmer can learn, uh, you know, the good old water spout at, like, what, level 48? But you can't breed it with a Squirtle, so how do you get that across? Well, here's the plot twist, okay? So Whalmer obviously being Field and War B, and Squirtle obviously being Monster and Water A. Here is the workaround. The Remoraid. So Remoraid, if we look at the Pokédex, you'll notice that Remoraid is Egg Group Water A and Water B. And if you look at the Egg moves, Remoraid can also learn Water Spell. Now, the easiest method, obviously, if you wanted to, you could just get a Remoraid or Octillery with Water Spout, which would be strong anyway. But again, we're going with the whole workaround of how to get it on something that just isn't breedable with the original. So, for instance, like the Squirtle just can't breed with a Whalmer, but we're going to pass from Whalmer to Remoraid to Squirtle. But just to clarify, this Remoraid can breed with Whalmer and can breed with a Squirtle. So what we would do is get this female Remoraid who doesn't have it, and we would breed it with this male Whalmer who does have Water Spout. Then it would make an egg together, like so. It would literally make an egg and it would come out as a Remoraid because it's female, and it would have Water Spout. So what we would do is make this come out as a male egg. So we're going to put in practice how this would actually work. For instance, we're going to go to this breeder real quick. We're going to go ahead and check the male Whalmer in with Water Spell. We're going to check our female Remoraid in, and as you can see, the four moves that it will learn will be Water Spout here, and it will be definitely a Remoraid because our Remoraid is the female, so it will come out as Remoraid, which we want. It will come out as a level 1 Remoraid with Water Spout. So we're going to click Breed. We're going to go Yes. And we do want to pick the specific gender. We're going to click Yes. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because obviously we want it on Squirtle. We want to keep it as Squirtle. So the female has to be Squirtle, in which case our Remoraid, which we're going to breed the Water Spout over to, needs to be a male. It's only going to cost 5 grand, we're just going to click OK. Ah, it's you! You're in time for the egg! And we want it back, we're just going to put it in a normal Pokeball, doesn't have to be anything special for now. And you'll notice that we now have the egg. Both parents have been consumed, which we previously spoke about in one of the first questions. All we do now is play the waiting game. Obviously, as you can see at the top left, we've got Flame Body activated because we've got our Chandelier up front with Flame Body as an ability. So we don't even have to wait that long until this egg is hatched. When this egg is hatched, I will return. All right, we're back. And as you can see, our Remoraid has hatched as a male level one with Water Spell on its moves. Now, if we go over here and just to finish this off, we're going to put the Remoraid and the Squirtle together. And as you can see, if we were to breed the Squirtle female and the Remoraid male with the Water Spout on our Remoraid, it will now give our Squirtle Skull Bash Rest, Hydro Pump, and Water Spell. So that, ladies and gents, is how the egg moves work. Breeding Shinies. Now this part I've actually been looking forward to, if I'm honest. My Shiny Luxray has needed an upgrade for a long while now. As you can see, my Luxray here, and you're probably thinking, okay, well, how does Breeding Shinies work? Can you breed a shiny with a non-shiny? The answer is no, you cannot breed with a non-shiny. You can breed a non-shiny with a non-shiny, and then you still have the 1 in 30,000 chance to get a shiny from the egg, but that is not how that works. You cannot breed a shiny with a non-shiny. So what is the reason for breeding the shiny, you ask? Now I'll bring you over to the IV page. Obviously the shinies aren't guaranteed to have amazing IVs. If you find a shiny in the wild, you are guaranteed at least 131 IV on the shiny. However, if you're breeding via eggs and stuff, unless you're breeding IVs, you are not guaranteed a 31 IV at all. You'll get breeding IVs, obviously. 
So if you're constantly breeding and breeding and breeding, you'll get whatever that comes out as, as an egg. You don't get a guaranteed 31. So anyway, I digress. The reality is, this Luxray is my best boy, and he will be my, you know, forever project until finished. I want to get a perfect 5x31 IVs on my shiny Luxray. That's what I want. A shiny Luxray with 5 31 IVs with a perfect nature. So it's going to be the most expensive project I've ever done in PokeMMO. Now, in order to do that, again, like I said, you, you cannot breed a shiny with a non shiny. So you're going to need another shiny. So I got the most unluckiest roll by finding my shiny Luxray, but it was a male. So the reality was obviously we've been over it before, but if you have a male, you can only breed with the female version of that Mon or a Ditto. So I had to go ahead and buy a shiny Shinx female for 2.6 million in-game cash to be able to actually carry on this breeding line that I want for my Luxray. And the reason why I'm doing this, obviously, it sounds like absolute madness, and you would be correct, it is absolute madness. But the reality is, I'm going to put a bracer on my shiny Luxray, and a bracer on my shiny Shinx there, and they're going to breed to make one shiny Shinx, which has both 31 IVs here. So in order to do this, I'm going to go to my bag and I'm going to use the power anklet on the female Shinx here. I'm also going to use the power band on my shiny Lux right here. So he keeps the 31 special defense and the Shinx keeps the 31 speed. And now we're going to go ahead and breed them together. So now that everything's out of the way, what we're going to do is put in our shiny Lux right here, my beautiful baby boy with the band, as you can see, which keeps the special defense. And we're going to put in our shiny Shinx female which with the other band, which keeps the speed. So as you can see, this new one will come out as a shiny Shinx, and it'll have 31 speed, 31 defense guaranteed, and then it will juggle the random stats between the parents on the rest of it, which don't really matter at the moment. As you can see, the trainer name is actually unknown, because one, my male uh, Luxray here, was actually on my other account, not my official Daku account, this was my TTV Daku one, and the female one I bought off the market, so obviously that one doesn't count as mine either, so it will actually have an unknown OT. We're going to go ahead and hit breed. We're going to go yes, we want this. Specific gender, yes. Now here's what we're going to do, okay? We're going to make this shiny Shinx a female on purpose for five grand, and I'll tell you exactly why in just a moment. So I'm actually going to put mine in a luxury ball because we're not going to be breeding this Shinx for a long time now until we get enough money, but here is our new baby. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, we've been waiting for... The egg hatching animation being added into Pokemon now is pretty awesome. Our beautiful baby Shinx! If we look at the stats now, you'll notice that, oh, 21 HP, not bad. We got 31 special defense and 31 speed on our Shinx. Very poggers. And we actually keep our particle effects as well if we had particle effects on our previous shiny. Another thing to note is, other than shinies itself, there is another thing called secret shinies, which are 16 times rarer than the normal shinies. Secret shinies can't be found by sweet scenting hordes. The only way to get a secret shiny while shiny breeding is to breed with a secret shiny already, or find yourself a secret shiny in the wild, obviously, and then breed it into your line. Other than that, you cannot get the secret shiny. So regarding why we made our Shinx female earlier, obviously I've mentioned it in the points previous, but if you jumped via a timestamp just to the shiny part and you wanted to know this once again, we will just quickly explain. So a female Shinx is way easier to breed than it would be a male Shinx, and here is why. So if we click on the Pokédex for Shinx and we go here, we can see that it's the egg group field. If we go to the GTL and we go to the advanced search and we go to shiny, all shinies, and we go to the egg group of field, and then we search, you'll find by the lowest price, females are everywhere for the lowest price, and males will be way higher price. Males are going to be used as like a main breeding bit, because this female Shinx can breed with literally any field male here. Whereas a male Shinx would only be able to breed with a Ditto Shiny, or an Evolution Line Shiny. We wanted to add another stat here to our female Shinx shiny, we would go for a field egg group male shiny, which would only cost us 2 mil, and I say only lightly, because yes, 2 million is a lot of money, however, if we wanted to breed it and this Shinx was male, we would have to breed with a Shinx again, of that old evolution line of Shinx, or a Ditto. If we had a male Shinx and we wanted to breed it, we'd be costing 3 million or more. And 2.6 million for this female looks right here as well, so it would cost us way more, and dittos, I'm afraid, would be way more as well. And the lowest shiny ditto is 6 mil. 
So hence why if you want to keep the breeding line going on your main mon, you want to make sure it's a female one. Because you will save way more money than I did on this breed. On to the last part of the video then, which is breeding a 5 or a 6x31 IV mon. Now it does include the nature as well within this video, however if you don't want to watch the video and you just want an image that you can look at constantly whilst doing your own thing without constantly going back to my video and pausing etc, then I do actually have an image on DeviantArt which I uploaded it and I made it in Photoshop, it's just a rough copy of basically what I'm going to be describing here, and here's the image here. So again you don't have to follow my video, you can follow this image if you want, if you want just a brief idea of how to do it and you just want to look at this without following, however this does show you each little step which I think is one of the best methods possible. Like I said, I just chucked it in Photoshop as a quick little uh, rough copy. As you can see, the arrows aren't exactly the best, but this should basically describe how to get your perfect 5 IV, IV mon. This is without nature, by the way, and without 6 IVs, but obviously we'll go into a bit more about that a little bit later. So we're going to create a 5 IV Pokemon, and we're going to go from the very start with just one 31 IV, and we're going to go all the way to the end of the 5 IV, and we'll explain how the natures kick in at the end as well, and also how you can get a 6 IV if that's what you really want. I would not recommend it, but I will show you how to do that as well. So what I like to do is get 16 Pokemon to start off with, all with different IVs in different places. However, I do have a control group, and having the control group makes it way easier to do, and I'll show you how to do that now. As you can see I've cleared some space in the box 1 so we can actually see what we're doing and not affect any other mons or get in the way of any other mons. But we're going to have a nice big space here that we can go through. So what we're actually going to go for is a 31 IV across the board for a Typhlosion. Because not only do these sell well, they're obviously really good for like gym reruns etc. So they'll actually be very helpful for me to do this for my own benefit as well as you know if you wanted to sell your own one etc. You could also do this to any Pokemon you want but we're going to focus on Typhlosion for this one. So here we go with the IVs. We've gone for the 31 across the board except attack. We don't want attack. It doesn't matter if we have some attack but we don't want that as 31. Uh, and there you go, I searched by price, and you can see the lowest here is actually 600. Um, this is actually quite cheap for a type lotion, 100%. I guess it's because it's a female, maybe, and like the other ones are like near enough 1 mil for that kind of IV coverage on a type lotion. Okay, to start us off, we're going to need a female Cyndaquil with a 31 IV, and we're going to try and make it the control group. And I'll show you what I mean by that now. First off, we're going to go to Advanced Search, Gender, and make it a female, and we're going to search. And you'll notice that the female Cyndaquils are very expensive. And this is without 31 IVs. So now we're going to describe to you how we find the control group. This is to save us so much more money along the line. So we're going to click on Cyndaquil and look, click on the Pokedex and we'll notice that Cyndaquil is in the egg group of Field, so that's brilliant news as Field is very very common. We're going to get rid of the Cyndaquil name, we're going to go to Advanced Search and we're going to make sure that we keep this as female because the females will be the control variable here. We're going to go to the egg group of Field and one by one we will go through these IVs to see what the cheapest IVs are in each category. So the minimum for 31 HP females as a control group would be about 4 to 4.5k so far. For 31 defense in field, it looks like it's around 3.5k. The special attack in field it seems like it's super cheap, like 2k. Special defense is around 4k. And then speed is quite expensive as well, around 4, 5, maybe 5k. So the reality is, special attack in field egg group for a female is actually super cheap, being around 2k. So that will be our control variable 100%. The problem with that now is that we need to get a Cyndaquil with Special Attack IV female. And that is not cheap itself, we've got a 55k here which we're just going to go ahead and buy. So there you go, we're going to add up on the calculator how much this is costing us all the way through. So what we're going to do now is get rid of the Cyndaquil name. And this may sound baffling now, but trust me on this one. So once you've found out the control group of what you want, the cheapest, now you don't have to do the control group, you can do this however you want, but this is how I do it to make sure that we get the cheapest offer possible. Obviously we bought a Cyndaquil 5k and our control group is Special Attack. So we're in the female gender and the egg group is field and we're in 31 special attack and that like I said these are super super cheap in comparison to the other IVs so these are our control group all you need to do is buy seven females of this egg group in this category so we're gonna go buy one Wisma here that's one two three four five oops six and seven. There we go, a couple of them got mailed to us there, we're going to put them in the box anyway, so it's all good. I claim those to the PC real quick, so we know what those are. 
So just to recap on what we just did, we have bought now eight email special attack 31 IVs of the field egg group and they will be our controlled variable throughout this whole breeding session. Now that we have these eight female special attacks, we actually need to go buy eight special attack bands. If we go to Lady Sat at the Table, which we've seen before previously, and we go to Power Lens, is special, holds the special attack IV, we're actually going to buy eight of these, which will come to a total of 80,000. So I've jumped with editing, but just to clarify what I've just done, I've now grabbed all of my power lenses here, which are the special attack, and I've now put them on every single one of these eight females with special attack IVs. They are all holding a power lens now because we'll be using these later. I will bring this back up again when we're breeding just to make sure everything's clear, but for now, just know that the eight power bands I just purchased I have now already put on these females ready to go. Obviously, we're going for special attack and we do not want attack at all. And obviously we're going to go for a sort of control group on the males as well. We're going to go for HP. So our Syndico here with special attack, we're going to make that breed with someone new male here with a field of 31 HP. So we'll go for that and we'll click by price. And we'll click this Whooper for instance. This Whooper male can now breed with our Syndico here. And then when we breed them, we'll hold the, you know, the braces, etc. And then obviously they'll breed the stats over. The next one is our part of our control group is this ferret which has the 31 special attack and on this one we're going to give it a defense IV instead of HP. We're going to look for a 31 defense male field, the cheapest price, which is the Glameow, and the Glameow can breed with the ferret. We're going to go back to the HP one and we're going to get a couple of these. This HP centric one can breed with the Wisma. We're going to need two more of those, so we're going to get this Sandile which can breed with that Wismer over there, Teddy Ursa, which can breed with that Poochiena there. Again, it doesn't really matter specifically, but we're going for more control groups. The last ones we need to get then, if we go to zero on that one, we need to get one with special defense and one with speed. We're going to get this Nidoran male with special defense and one with speed. We're going to get one more defense as well. This will all make sense later, but we're just getting breeding groups for each and every single one of them here because at some point they're all going to mash together in one. If that kind of confused you, do not fear. We are going to be doing them one by one and I'm going to be updating the picture as we go along. So the first breeding group then, we're going to put the Cyndaquil and this Whooper together. And just to clarify here on the IVs, the Whooper has HP and the Cyndaquil has special attack. Now the Cyndaquil is holding the power lens which holds the special attack and we're going to go and pick up the HP band, which is the green one, the power weight, that's another 10k, to put on our whooper. So here we go then, our very first egg group, which is, you know, the first part of the entire breeding. We're going to put our Cyndaquil in and our whooper in, and as you can see, it will come out with 31 HP and 31 special attack, which is the very start of this whole breeding process. We're going to go ahead and breed, and we want to make sure that it comes out as a female, as this is our main mon we are trying to get as 5 IVs. Now again, as I've said previously in this video, because if the egg group is like mostly male or mostly female, if you want to try and get the opposite, it will cost a lot to make it force the gender. So for instance, I think Cyndaquil has a very high male rate when it comes to wild or hatching. So if you try and make it female, it's going to come out as 21,000 just to make it a female. Now the Pokeballs don't really matter because you can change Pokeballs at any time. So we're going to take this as an egg and we're going to put it in an ordinary Pokeball. And there we go, we have our first egg, which will be part of our whole control group, into our 5 IV Mon. Now we're back in the PC, I'm going to put the egg in there so we know what that is. And we're going to take out the next egg group. In this one we've got obviously the control group of Ferret, which has the 31 special attack again, with the power lens so it holds the special attack. And we want to now get one of the orange bands, which holds the defense. We're going to get power belt, which is another 10k. And now we're going to put the power belt on the Glameow. So here we go again, we're putting in the Ferret with the special attack. And we're putting in the Glameow with the defense. And we're going to breed this with the Cyndaquil. This is the second egg group. We're going to breed this with the Cyndaquil later on, so we'll we'll figure this out as it goes. But we're going to click on breed. And it comes up with this because the Glamel has a hidden ability. That's okay, we don't want the hidden ability. That's fine, we'll take that. And we want it to come out as a male. This is very important to so make this one come out as a male. It's only going to cost us five grand, but we want to guarantee it's male. There goes our second egg group done. 
We'll put that in the PC box as well. Onto our third egg group then. So as you can see, we've got the Wisma as our control group once again for the special attack with the power lens. And the Sentra is going to need a HP band. That is another 10k. So here we go then, our Wisma with our special attack and our Sentra with the HP. We're going to breed these and make them come out as a female as well to keep the control group going. Onto our next ones then. We've got another Wisma as part of our control group for the special attack. And we've got the Nidoran, which also has a special defense IV. Now we're going to buy a power band, which is 10,000 as well, and also put that on the Nidoran. So this is egg group number four, and what we're going to do is breed egg group number four, this Wisma in the egg, with egg group number three. Again, this will all make sense later, but for now, obviously, you can see the special 31 going over and the special defense 31 going over from that one. We're going to breed this into a male. On to our next ones then. As you can see, we've got another Wisma with the control group of special attack, and this Teddy Ursa also has a HP one, which we're going to do now. That's another power weight band, that's another 10k. This is their group 5, and we're going to make this one come out as a uh, female as well to keep the control group going as well. We'll go female, and 5000, there we go. Control group 6 now then, we've got a Zigzagoon with our control group, obviously special attack, and we've got a Daramaka which will breed with it, who has 31 speed, so we're going to go ahead and get the band for that, which is the blue one, the power anklet, another 10,000 for that, and we're going to put that on the Daramaka. This is control group 6, obviously with the Daramaka and Zigzagoon, we're going to have to make this one be male, as it's going to breed with control group 5, as you can see special attack speed, we're going to breed this one and we're going to make sure once again it is a male. Control group 7 then, we have a Puchiena and a Sandile. Puchiena obviously with the special attack and the power lens, and the Sandile with the HP. Get yeah, another power weight then for another 10k, and we'll be putting the power weight on the Sandile. Okay, so for control group 7, as we've explained already, 31 special attack, 31 HP, we're going to make this one female as well. Here we go now then, we're going to put number 7 in the box for a minute. Uh, we're going to go for control group 8, which has to come out as a male. So we've got the Uchiena again for control on the special attack. And then we have obviously Simsia, which has 31 defense, which will get the band for that as well. Now. This is our last egg control group then, and we're going to make these ones come out as male, as I've already said. Again, power belt there for the defense, and again, power lens for the special attack. I'm going to breed these two together. This is our last control group. So yeah, we want that to come out as a male and that'll cost another five grand. So if we put this back in the box for a minute, now you can see all of our control groups as so. Obviously now you'll see a picture diagram of how everything is working out. And now we're going to go and just quickly hatch these. Obviously once again we have a chandelier up as our front party so that we have flame body at the top left which means that eggs will indeed hatch faster. So we're just going to keep this out and quickly hatch these eggs and put them exactly back where they were. All right, we're back after hatching all the eggs. And now here's where the group starts to narrow down a bit. As you can remember, the Cyndaquil was our base one here. And we're going to breed that with the male centric now. And our second base one was our Wisma female. We're going to breed that with the male female, uh, Wisma. And then we've got another Wisma female, we're going to breed that with the male Zigzagoon. We've got a female Puchiena, which we're going to breed with the male Puchiena. Now I'm going to quickly go over the IVs and why we have done such a thing. Obviously the control group, the main control group, we kept as female, as you can see. So what we're going to do now is look at our Cyndaquil, which is our main, main one, which we keep female all the way through, no matter what. And then we're going to look at our Centret here, which we made, which is a male. So if you look here now, we've got 31 HP and 31 Special Tech. And this one has 31 special attack from the previous control group and 31 defense. So what we're going to do now in our first breed here is keep the 31 HP from the Cyndaquil and keep the 31 defense from the Sentry. And because they both have 31 special attack, we don't need to hold a band for those. Now we're going to go ahead and buy those bands. The others we'll talk about as well. Obviously, we'll go through the list of them all, but I'm trying to do them one by one so I don't lose any of you on the way. Once again, Cyndaquil with the HP, so we're buying one HP band, that's 10k. And then the Sentry has 31 defense, so we're going to be buying the defense one, that's another 10k. Obviously, put the items on the mons as well. Don't accidentally breed them without them. So here we go with the second tier of breeding, the Cyndaquil and the Centric together, as you can see 31, 31 and 31 again. We're going to breed these together because they hold the bands, and we want to make sure this is once again female, this definitely has to be a female 
Cinderquill. Oh, and it's going to cost us quite a lot because of the egg ratio, male to female, once again. But we'll have to do this to keep it as a Cinderquill the whole time. Putting the Cinderquill away then, we're going to go get the other egg groups. Here we go, we're going to keep our Cinderquill there, and we're going to move on to the next egg group, which are these two Wizmas, and I'm going to quickly talk over them as well. As you can see, this Wizma has 31 HP, 31 Special Attack, and this Wizma has 31 Special Attack and 31 Special Defense, so we're going to keep the HP on this one, and keep the Special Defense on this one, and we're going to make this one a male when we breed it, so it can breed with that new Cinderquill again. Again, we're going to be buying a HP band and a Special Defense band, that's 20k in total there. Just to make it clear, this egg group here, which is the second tier of it, we're going to make a male specifically. As you can see, 31 HP, 31 Special Attack, 31 Special Defense. We're going to breed and make this a male gender. This will be the this is the second egg group, so it will have to breed with the Cyndaquil, and obviously we keep Cyndaquil's female, and this one will be the male. It will all make sense as we go along. There we go, there's our next Wisma egg in the box here which is our male egg, and again this will breed with the Cyndaquil later for sure, and then these two need to breed to make an egg, and then these two need to breed to make an egg, and then they will also breed together afterwards as well. Again, I'm so sorry if this is confusing, I understand how confusing the breeding can be the very first time you're doing it, even the first couple of times you're doing it, but again, there's an image on the screen for you, as we're going along we're going to be showing you each and every step, and I'll even upload, like I said, the newer image of every step that we're doing in this video, so you can follow along exactly with me. Don't forget you can also pause and rewind at any point if you get confused. Again we're going to be grabbing this Wisma and this Zigzagoon who are now going to breed together. We're going to bring up their stats as well so you can see what's happening. The Wisma has 31 HP, 31 Special Attack. This Zigzagoon has 31 Special Attack and 31 Speed so we're going to be buying the bands for them as well. We want the Speed for Zigzagoon that's 10k and we want the HP for the Wisma which is another 10k. Now these ones we're going to put together right here for the 31 HP, 31 Special Attack, 31 Speed, we're going to make these female. So that's that Zigzagoon and Puchiana egg done there, and we're going to put that back in its position, and we're going to do the last two and then we'll hatch the eggs etc. The last two control group here, I don't forget the last one we just made is female and this one has to breed with it, so we're going to make whoever this like comes out as, as a male. We're going to put the HP and the Special Attack with the Defense and Special Attack, so we're going to have to keep HP again and then also keep Defense. The HP 10k and the defense 10k, that is a total of 20k again. So here we go, both Puchianas together, 31 HP, 31 defense, 31 special attack, and we're going to make sure this one comes out as a male. That's another 5 grand. So there's all of our eggs, we're going to just quickly hatch these off recording and come back when they're done. Alright ladies and gents, we are back with all the eggs hatched, as you can see we've got the four eggs, they, I did move them a little bit, they were actually like over here and they sort of had gaps but basically they're still in the same order. Now is on to the next stage, as you can see our Cyndaquil here is female and it has 31 HP, 31 defense, 31 special attack, we are now going to breed that with this Wisma, and then this Wisma is also going to breed with this Puchiana, I'll bring up the stats for those just now so you can see everything that's going to happen. Again this Cyndaquil with the 31 HP defense special attack is now going to be with this HP, Special Attack, and Special Defense. What we're going to do now is put one Defense Band on this one, and one Special Defense Band on this one, and then they will carry that over to the next stage. And then after that first egg is done, we're obviously going to make this one Force Female, and then the next one Force Male. The next group, the second egg group in the next category, will be this Wisma and this Uchiena. So on this Wisma we have 31 HP, 31 Special Attack, 31 Speed, and on this Puchiana we have 31 HP, 31 Defense, and 31 Special Attack. So obviously we're going to be carrying the Speed from the Wisma, and then we're going to be carrying the Defense from the Puchiana. And then we'll force this egg to also be male. Let's crack on with the first breed, and then we'll do the second breed as well. Once again we're going to be using the Cyndaquil and this Wisma. We're going to go talk to this lady once more, and I forgot what we needed specifically. So we'll go to the Cyndaquil, and the Cyndaquil we need the Defense, that's Power Belt, that's another 10k. On the Wisma we need Special Defense, which is the Yellow Band, which is another 10k, and then we're going to put those on as well. Coming up to the Daycare Man once again, we're going to put these two in, and as you can see, 31 across the boards there for the HP, Defense, Special Attack, and Special Defense. We're going to go ahead and breed, and yes, and then we're going to make this one again female to keep it Cyndaquil. Another 21k because it's Cyndaquil with that egg group ratio. 
We'll keep this egg on us because we've got so far now and we're near the end. We're going to grab these last two, as you can see, the Wisma and the Poochiena. We're going to go to the Lady and we need to, once again, quickly check what the Wisma has and quickly check what the Poochiena has so we can get the correct bands. So the Wisma will be carrying over the speed, so we need the Power Anklet, which is another 10k. And the Poochiena will be carrying over the Defense, which is this orange one. It's another 10k as well, and we'll put those on. There we go, guys. So now we're going to put in the Wisma and the Poochiena, which we just did. Which are those? Now you see 31 across the board, but obviously they were different from the Syndico ones. We're going to breed this one. Say yes, and we're going to make sure this one is a male. Again, these are not like these are like 50-50 male to female ratios, so they only cost 5,000. Obviously, we're going to do that and put it in a cheap Pokeball as well. We don't actually need to go anywhere on this one because we're very, very near the end now. We've got the Cyndaquil egg here and we'll have this Wisma egg, which will come out as a male. And we'll just quickly wait for these to hatch. There we go, guys. Both of them are hatched. And without me even saying, I imagine you can already see, we're going to keep the speed on the Wisma and the special defense on this Cyndaquil. This will be almost at the very end of the long road here, guys. Once again, we're going to buy the Power Anklet. That's 10k. And we're going to buy the special defend band. That's another 10k. Open our bag and make sure we give the correct bands to the right thing. So this is it guys, this is pretty much at the very end now. We're going to chuck in that Cyndaquil and chuck in that Wisma. And as you can see, the only thing we're missing is the attack, which we don't want anyway. Six IV Mons are bad, okay? Anyone who does breeding professionally on PokeMMO will tell you that having attack high on something that's a special attacker is really bad. If you go against something, let's say for example, an Umbreon that uses foul play, that will use your own attack against you. You do not want high IVs on attack if you're a special attacker there is no reverso so if you're an attacker there is no actual real bad thing about having 31 a special attack as well but it's just an absolute waste of money now if you did want to go if from the 5 iv build to a 6 iv build all you would have to do is everything we've already done you'd have to do twice to reach the 6 ivs and again, you basically, you almost have to do the exact same thing if you wanted to carry over a nature as well, but we'll crack on with that after we breed this one here. But without getting too complicated, here's our Cyndaquil with all those 31s, Wisdom of 31s, and obviously, as you can see, the only thing, like I said, is the attack. That's not going to be 31, but that is Poggers. We want that. We're going to go ahead, breed. We're going to make sure the Cyndaquil comes out female again, and you could make this male if you want, but I'm going to explain to you why you'd make it female in just a second. I'm going to quickly make it female. And we're going to cost that extra bit of money. And we're not going to put it in one of those like special balls just yet. We're going to actually put it in another cheap Pokeball. And I'll show you why again in just a second. What we're going to do is wait for this egg to hatch. And I will quickly explain to you why we done female again. How the nature works. And we'll just quickly recap on the six IVs as well. Alright ladies and gents, as you can see, our Cyndaquil female has finally hatched. And we're going to make him follow us behind us. There we go. Look how cute Cyndaquil is. That's so cute. Anyway, as you can see, it came up the nature of ge uh, Gentle. So the special defense is up and the defense is a bit lower, but that is honestly fine. It may not seem like the best thing ever, but it's not negative, And that is the main thing about it. As you can see, the IVs came up perfectly, 5 times 31. Once again, I just want to reiterate that you do not want 6 times 31. You don't need it and it is not necessary. I know you might like shiny numbers or something, but it definitely isn't necessary. If anything, it's going to come back to bite you in the ass. Excuse my language. But if you get foul played and you have 31 attack IVs for no reason, that's on you. You do not want that, okay? This is perfectly fine with a 5 times 31 IV. The reason why we made it female is, obviously, if you wanted to make it a 6 times IV, if you wanted to, uh, you know, do that for some reason, just do what we've already done, the breeding-wise, double it and make the last one a male instead of female, and then, once again, breed this one with the new male one that you would had. But again, once again, you don't want to be wasting money like that for something that's actually going to be negative for you. Another reason for making it female in my case was if this female came out with all these IVs and it was perfect, it was great, but then we had a nature, which, you know, there's a couple of natures in the game which are negative, which would give you negative special attack or negative speed and we absolutely didn't want any of those luckily we rolled and got a good one if you've ended up with a nature that gives you negative special attack or negative speed on something that you need with special attack and speed then you need to try and re-roll as that would be very important natures are actually really important in any pokemon game 
Let's take for example then this Cyndaquil if it came out with a nature that was negative to us. For example, like not minus special attack or minus speed, which would have been absolutely traumatizing for the Cyndaquil and we don't want that. And you've ended up with 5 times 31 IVs and you're thinking, oh I've ruined it, what can I possibly do? We're going to now go over how the moving the nature over would be perfect, like the best way to move the nature over. The best way to do this is to find a male of the air group that you want and the nature that you want. Gentle isn't the best nature here, but we'll go ahead and try and find one of those natures as a male, as an example. So again, we'll just pretend that this doesn't have gentle, this has something that will negatively impact us, and we want gentle. I'm not saying you do, I'm saying for this example, we're going to be using gentle as the example. What we're actually going to do is find this egg group once again in the GTL, so we can go to advanced search, and we're going to go to egg group of field, and we obviously want a male one. Now you can actually get away with, if you've got a 5 times IV one, you can get a 4 times IV one, and it'll work that way, and I'll show you how now. Once again, egg group field, we want male, and we're going to try and find the cheapest 31 times 4 possible. So we're going to go for like special defense 31, speed 31, Special attack 31 and maybe just defense 31 as well. We're going to search for that by price. Now the lowest is Ponito with 2000. Obviously you're going to want the nature, right? So that again, gentle isn't the best thing ever, but we've taken gentle for an example. If you didn't have gentle and you wanted gentle, this is how you'd do it. So you'd find the cheap IVs for a 4 times 31. Then you would go to the nature and you want to try and find, like a, like the example, I want gentle. Again, you don't want gentle, it's not the best thing for a Cyndaquil, but we're going to take it for an example. So here we go, we're going to click on gentle, you would search, and then you would find, again, this Ekans right here as the IVs that we want, right? Okay, so what you would do in this instance is we would take this HP, we would put a HP band on our Cyndaquil, and on the Ekans we wouldn't put a band on, we would put an Everstone on, so that it keeps the gentle nature. So when they breed together, you still have a five times IV Cyndaquil, but it will carry this gentle nature over. Again, gentle is not perfect for Cyndaquil, but it is also not negative, and it's just used as an example in this video. What you would really want is something that boosts your special attack or boosts your speed, if that's what you really want, but we're just using gentle as an example. One of the best natures for a Cyndaquil, in my opinion, would be a timid nature. So if we search for that, and I'll show you the just lowest price for a timid male of this sort with those IVs. So that's four IVs again with a timid nature. So what timid does is, is plus 10% speed and minus his attacks. That's even better for someone who doesn't want attack and, you know, you want minus attack the best you can. So that's incredibly good, but they go for 400k, obviously. You could obviously breed your own one and hope that you either get this nature, or you could breed the nature up one by one, but either way, it is always expensive. It will never, ever be cheap. But again, that is how you look for it. Just to recap, obviously, we got pretty lucky with the Cyndaquil. There is no massive positive effect on the Cyndaquil, but also no negative either. It doesn't give us a minus special attack. doesn't give us minus speed. The Cyndaquil is perfectly fine. There you go, ladies and gents. Those are all the main questions with the answers. I'm just going to go through a couple of extra tips before we end the video. The first small tip is obviously breeding babies. Something like a Pichu will not be able to breed with, say, a Pikachu. So the best way to do that and how to get around it would be to evolve this Pichu as quick as possible to a Pikachu and then it will be able to breed. Obviously, you can't breed babies. Another quick tip is if we were to breed this Cyndaquil with a gentle nature, with a male with a gentle nature, it does not come out as gentle, it is still randomized as the egg. So even if the male and female have the same nature, the egg will not come out of that nature. The only way to actually transfer nature is genuinely the Everstone. Also changing the Pokeball, I forgot to mention, so this is a top tip, if you just go to your Pokemon and you right click it or something, you can see the little Pokeball icon at the top, and you can just click on it here, and you can change it to any Pokeball you want. I don't think you can change it to a Master Ball, but there you go, you can change it to a Luxury Ball now, without wasting loads of money through the breeding process when he asks if you've got a Pokeball to put it into for the egg originally. You don't have to waste loads of money, you can just put them in cheap Pokeballs every time, and then when you've got the finished product, you can change your Pokeball at the top. Another thing to note, which is what I did in this video, is turn the egg animations back off. They are a new feature since the latest update, but I don't like them. Obviously, I like to get all my stuff really quick and done. So if you click on the menu at the very bottom, or if you're on the phone, it's the top right. And we'll go to settings, and then we go over to gameplay. 
you'll notice at the very bottom here there is a disable hatching animations just tick that and save and then every time an egg pops out it won't do a whole animation on your screen it'll just pop and you'll just have to look for it another tip is obviously when you've finally finished all your breed and you're ready to go don't put any xp don't do any fights with it etc make sure you eevee train it properly as well i actually have a video on the best xp and the best eevee farming locations for you in another video i will put that in the description for you as well one more quick tip for you, which I should have followed myself, by the way, was if you realize when we first got the Cyndaquil, it actually cost me around 55,000 to get one IV on it. However, if we quickly do some maths, you can save some money. So first off, if you just want to find a Cyndaquil, it doesn't even matter what Cyndaquil it is. Just go for the absolute cheapest Cyndaquil possible with no IVs. Say, for instance, even this male Cyndaquil is 20k. Just go ahead and buy that. The next thing we want to do is just search for a ditto and then when we look for ditto obviously like i did i got us 31 special attack you can find a ditto for 5k so that's 25k for that and then you could breed it and make it a female and i think the female thing was about 21k so that's about 46k for the female cyndaquil to have 31 iv in special attack and not buy something off the market for 55 plus k i got scammed i was an idiot don't do what i did at the start <laughs> The very last tip then, which I probably should have said at the start of the video, is every breeding location in every region. So as of now, Johto is not currently out of the making of this video. Later on it will be, I'll put in the description specifically all these sort of things if Johto comes out and you need to know. Right now we're in Kanto on 4 Island, and that is where the breeding center is on this tiny little island here. It's kind of out of the way, you got the main map and Four Island is where you go to the breeding area. I like this area because it's very calm and there's not loads of people here no matter what channel you're on. There's usually not that many people here and I like it here. With Hoenn up next then you want to go to Malvo City and just to the left of that you will see the breeding center here which is in Route 17 or 117 apologies. Uh, here is the map if you need to know specifically where it is. Sido up next, Salacian Town is where the breeding center is, just top left of the PC, you'll see it straight away, and here is the map just in case you want to see where that is as well. Over to Unova then, in Route 3 is where you'll find the breeding center here as well, and usually this is absolutely packed. This is my most hated place for breeding mons, as this there's just so many people here all the time. Literally all the time. Not only do you have breeders here, you have obviously new players who have just started playing Unova, who are all just swarming this area usually. I'm on Channel 4, so it's not so bad, but if you're on Channel 1, you just won't even be able to breathe. There is so many people usually here. Yeah, so Route 3, and I'll quickly show you the map of where that is as well, and this will be the very, very last tip of this video. So there you go, ladies and gents. There is the full breeding guide with everything you'll need to know or want to know, and extra tips on the end as well. If there is something I've missed or if there's new questions that we need to answer, please check the comments in this YouTube video as I will have something pinned or I will be answering questions in there as well, just in case something is missed out. Well, I truly hope you enjoyed this video. This has taken me so much time, love and effort put into this one. If anyone you know needs a breeding guide or if you see anyone in the PokeMMO Discord etc who needs a good guide that goes over everything possible, please I insist you share this video around and help everyone else out there as well. Much love everyone. Peace.